Hello there. Welcome back to the channel, my fellow brown coats. It is your boy Ellie Mosley, a 22 year old law field chief, City Australia, shooting a shot, baby. And today we are up to episode three of Firefly titled Bushwhacked. And no, I ain't talking about the Daniel Stern movie, but yes, we are making our way through the series. Last episode, we had the train job, which was the original pilot that aired. Um, when the show came out, it wasn't the actual pilot intended, um, Serenity, which was the first episode we watched, but last episode we got to see the second pilot which was aired, or the actual one which aired when the show came out, and if I was to make a quick judgment on which one I prefer, I much prefer Serenity, I think Serenity is the better pilot by far, in my opinion, um, I just think Serenity, due to the runtime, uh, it had more time to get, you got more time to get a hold of the characters, and understanding of how they got on board, um, better world building in my opinion as well with the visual cues rather than just getting it handed to you on a platter. Um, I felt like the second episode rushed a lot of the world building aspects um, and really explained it to you a lot and I felt like it dumbed down the audience in my opinion. But yes, never mind. We have seen the first two episodes. We have seen both the intended pilot by Joss Whedon and the actual pilot, which aired. But yes, now we are up to episode three titled Bushwhack. Let's waste no more time. Let's have some fun. Let's get into the reaction. After the Earth was used up, we found a new solar system and hundreds of new Earths were terraformed and colonized. Okay. The central planets formed the Alliance and decided all the planets had to join under their rule. It seems like this recap is like on that point. happening everything and that this... From what you guys have said, it might be just the Disney Plus version that's inserted this cap. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed the comment section last episode. Um, all the comments have been fantastic. You guys giving me an understanding of Anara's role as a companion. Um, and questioning certain elements about Malcolm, which I like as well. And I gave a theory. One of the comments, I think, was about why Malcolm would let a priest involved or a shep shepherd to come on board. Someone who's highly religious. And I thought to myself, I'm just like, okay, we know Malcolm has lost faith because in the first episode of Serenity, you know, he kissed the cross um, in the opening battle. But then towards later in the episode, you saw his sort of views on faith and outlook on God and religion. And I think Malcolm as a character, he is amused by a lot of things. Like you saw in the episode, The Train Job, that, you know, um, that he saw there were Alliance people on board. And that just made, I guess, the heist all the more enticing for him, all the more fun um, that he's, you know, doing it while slipping past Alliance soldiers. And even in the first episode when he played the trick on Simon about Kaylee being dead, you can tell he finds amusement in certain, uh, certain things. And I feel like him having Shepard on board and allowing him to be on board is sort of an amusement thing for him where he's just like, he's going to take pleasure in it, have fun with a religious person on board because he knows his views on religion he's not a man of faith anymore and i think he's gonna have fun with that i think he's gonna uh be uh sort of and like he's gonna have en uh, he's gonna seek enjoyment out of seeing shepherd have his like religious inputs on certain things and malcolm's just a bit like he's just gonna toy with him muck around i feel like it's sort of like an amusement thing in my opinion my opinion just judging off what malcolm's um like what malcolm has done in the last two episodes <laughs> Hey, space basketball. Space Jam. <laughs> River's like, what game is this? What sorcery is this? Hey, yo, Inara, you cannot enter the room like that. <laughs> Somebody alert. I must be coming up on something. Oh my god. If we leave, we're all doomed. Who's flying this thing? Oh, right, that would be me. <laughs> I'm back to work. <laughs> Why is it made such one man short? Yeah, little Kaylee's always one man short. <laughs> hey, Doc, why don't you come on down and play for our side? No, I won't mind. A lot of the ball looks like it's just duct tape. <laughs> it's like a spherical object that's just duct taped all around it. <laughs> and they continue to play the game despite proximity alert. <laughs> oh sh Yep, time out, time out. Near enough. What happened? Who 
Hold him up. Anybody home? He's inhaling her, but whoever's there is as healthy as the guy we just ran over. Bring someone closer. Is she close enough to ring the doorbell? What is it? It's a ghost. Oh, man. I'm gonna have a. I swear, if River's right and it is a ghost, I don't want him in a horror episode. I just dealt with one in Angel and I can't take him well. I don't care. I'm still free. You can't take the sky from me. There's no beacon. Which means it's likely no one's looking to find her. All the more reason for us to do the right thing. How's about you just say a prayer when we slide on by? <laughs> Shall I remind you of the story of the Good Samaritan? <laughs> I'd rather you didn't. But we'll check it out. If not, well then, no one's gonna mind if we take a look around, see if there's not something of value they might want to find. Yeah, no, uh, someone could be hurt. <laughs> Jane Hood value? Yeah, yeah, someone could be hurt, let's get on. <laughs> Some of those camera zoom-ins as well, um, where it's like sort of a shot of the ship and then it just quickly zooms into it really reminds me of the expanse and i know the expanse came out after but those expanse is another fantastic show in space in my in my opinion i absolutely love the expanse and it does use those quick zoom um not cuts but it does use those quick zooms when you have sort of like a wide shot or uh something of an object in space and it quickly zooms on in on it the expanse does utilize that a lot but yeah i can see where the expanse got some sort of influence from in this show because a lot of the elements in this show kind of remind me of the expanse as well where do you think you're headed thought i'd offer my services in case anyone on board required medical attention chances are when you're going in first we'll holler if we need you something wrong But I, I suppose it's just the thought of a little miler and glass being the only thing separating a person from nothing. Impressive what nothing can do to a man. Like that fella we bumped into. He likely stuck up under our belly about now. That's what space trash does, you know, kind of latches on the first big something, stops long enough. It'd be a bit like you and your sister, wouldn't it? Jane, man! <laughs> <laughs> Jane and Simon's relationship uh, is going to be an interesting one over this season. Or sort of season. For some reason as well, I love how the spacesuits, they're not your typical, you know, squeaky clean spacesuits. It still has like that sort of a Western vibe to it. Um, and like they seem rusty, worn down, even like the color grading on them or like the color of them, like very brown, very dull like colors. Um, and they're not like crystal clean as well. They're not, yeah, I, I just, I just like the style, stylistic choice of that, in my opinion. Goes to show that the crew also doesn't have access to potentially the best resources. Serious crew disappearance. Uh, we're in for a horror one. Sir. Personal log. Someone was in the middle of an entry. Oh my. How does TV static get me? There is, there is no screaming. Grab your med kit, let's hoof it. Now wants us both over there on a double. I'll, I'll ask and I'll look in on her. Whatever, I ain't waiting. I'll meet you over there, but don't take forever. Still gotta get suited up. I love how out of his comfort zone Simon is in this situation. 
and everyone's just got no suit on. <laughs> what are you doing here and what's with the suit? Oh, another one. <laughs> really? You're hilarious. Sadist. <laughs> All right, enough. We got time for games. As long as you're here, as well lend a hand. You can roll with Kaylee. It's two, and three. two and three. Two and three episodes. Right? A few loads each. No need to be greedy. We're all the people. Ship says lifeboat launched more than a week ago. We're gonna assume everyone got off okay. Anyway, we're just here to pick the bones. So you two start in the engine room. Jane, you take the galley. You um have this on wrong. <laughs> Simon's just getting bullied. Sir. Now, six and seven, we've signed on. Lifeboat wouldn't hold a third of that. I know. Wash, any luck? I think I found something that pretty well matches that class. The layout looks about right. Seems to me any valuables, if there are any, likely be stored somewhere between there and aft. Say the word. Keep the engine running, we should be wrong. I really like a lot of the handheld camera movement being used this episode. Um, especially to make it feel like you're actually present in the ship as well. You're walking with them. Um, and the camera shaking a lot. Not like intense shaky cam, but like just, you know, just a bit unbalanced. Locked. I don't know. like to be a very good sign. Ah oh, man, nah oh, man, dolls, dolls and me don't mesh well together as well. I love the atmosphere of this episode so far as well. Here, like you can tell, you can tell not everything is gonna go according to plan, or not everything is is what it seems as the characters make it out to be. You're still uncomfortable and on the edge of the, your seat, despite like the episode giving no hints as to a mysterious creature entity or what's gone wrong um you just assume okay a lifeboat discharged um with all 16 passengers on board but um as we heard before um a lifeboat can't carry that many people so in the back of your head as these characters are traversing the ship and looking obviously for valuables you're just thinking to yourself wait this isn't what it seems there's something wrong um something has gone badly wrong as we saw there was a individual that crash landed on the window um and that's playing in the back of your head as your characters or as our characters or our heroes are constantly walking around this ship um and i'm interested to see there's like a really good aura of mystery here empty protein crop supplements everything a grown family needs to make a fresh start on a new world protein plus families that's about a fortune the rest of your ticking stuff. I need a hand holding it out of here. Sir. Even on a lifeboat, you'd think those who escaped would find room for some of this. Exactly. What happened? Hi, River. Sir? Nobody escaped. Nobody. Oh. What a reveal. That's some hive oh mentality God. stuff. That's some alien me. stuff. I know what this is. Xenomorph? <laughs> get her out of here. Jane? Jane, drop what you're doing and get to the engine room. I want you to take Kaylee and the doctor off this boat. Don't ask questions. Oh! What a switch up. What a switch up. Captain? Fantastic use of lighting Captain. there as well. From about, sir. Galley. We heard shooting. River. Moving out. No one's gonna hurt you. No, no mercy. No. I mean, more than we already did. No mercy. Oh, we got lots of mercy. <laughs> we got lots and lots of. Oh. <laughs> A real beast. <laughs> it's a wonder you're still alive. <laughs> Looks really kind of crazy. 
<laughs> and that's a dub for Simon. I wonder how long he'd been living like that. Who knows? He must be real brave to survive like that when nobody else did. Yeah, real hero killing all them people. What? No, we don't believe that. Maybe he was infected by some parasite? No, do we? I don't know. Captain wouldn't have brought him on board with that the case. Dope him. I don't think that. Just do it. No mercy. No resistance. I noticed that some of the individuals hung up had a hole in the chest, like a... Open up. Like a xenomorph had burst out of the inside. chest. Or they got hit by a plasma caster by a predator. Did it open up what's inside? Is he infected? How's our patient? Aside from borderline malnutrition, he's in remarkably good health. So he'll live then. Which, to my mind, is unfortunate. <laughs> Not a very charitable attitude, Captain. Charity be putting a bullet in his brain pan. Yeah. We saved him the suffering. All right, no one goes anywhere. Nothing more we can do for him now. Not after what he's seen. What do you mean? The ship was hit by Reavers. Oh. Reavers. Okay. So go. That's not good. You know, he don't. That's how. No way. Who was that other fellow? The one we run into. Like I said before, he went stir crazy, killed the rest, then took a walk in space. Just a second ago, you said that we. Don't matter what I said. One Reavers. Reavers don't leave no survivors. Should be treated with the way they did. What are you yeah. suggesting? No matter if we took him off that boat, Captain. The place he's gonna live from now on. I don't accept that. Whatever horror he witnessed. Whatever acts of barbarism, it was done by men. Nothing more. Reavers ain't men. Of course they are. Too long removed from civilization, perhaps. <laughs> but men. <laughs> and I believe there's a power greater than men. <laughs> a power that heals. Reavers might take issue with your philosophy. <laughs> if they had a philosophy. But they weren't too busy gnawing on your insides. He was right. Reavers ain't men. They forgot how to be. Got out to the edge of the galaxy to that place of nothing, and that's what they became. Why are we still sitting here? Reavers, wouldn't we be gone? Work ain't done. Still substantial money value sitting over there. Oh, there ain't no one over there with their bodies. No rotten way. Not if Reavers messed with them. James, who's the other one? I'll go. Shout out Simon. He dealt with bodies, they don't worry me. I'd like to go with him. Maybe see what I can do about the way he disposes of the rest. <laughs> it's already resting pretty good, Shepard. We were sort of that. How we treat our dead is part of what makes us different than those who get the slaughter. I can have the people looking over my shoulder once we're gone. I ain't saying there's any peace to be had. On the off chance there is, those folks deserve a little of it. I love the character interactions in this show. Sure, he doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> Bro, and Nara could put me to sleep with her voice. And that's that's a compliment, okay? <laughs> She's so calm and soothing. Real pretty, Captain, what you just said. <laughs> Didn't think you were one for rituals and such. I'm not. I don't think it's a thing that Reavers allow. No reason to concern them with what's to be done. Sir? Huh? Mm -hmm. Real damn dear legs. What is that? Booby trap. Reavers sent that thing into the rescue ship. Triggered it when the last time. And when we detach... It blows. Okay, so we go. Oh. I don't know. Sit tight until. What? Reavers come back? Just like they jerry rigged it with the pressure catch. It's the only thing that'll work with all these spare parts. How do you expect to make that easy to fix the DC lock? You tell me right now, little Kaylee, you really think you can do this? Sure. Yeah. Occupy the others while the main crew okay, deals so with the problem. <laughs> besides, if I mess up, it's not like you'll be able to yell at me. So if the uh, the episode before the train job was the first episode that aired, this was the first introduction to the Reavers, right? Um, and still, you get a sense of how afraid the characters are and sort of what the Reavers sort of are and their sort of established um, uh, stature in the universe. 
Um, but in my opinion, I still prefer the first episode interaction with the Reva ship going by and how scared everyone was and the tension in that scene. And them coming into the fray again later in that episode in Serenity. But this does the job quite well as well with how afraid Jane was. Um, and yeah, you saw him in the beginning of the episode playing games with Simon, mucking around, sort of had that cocky attitude. Reavers are mentioned. Reavers hit the ship and Jane's scared to crap. <laughs> Damn, Reavers are savages. I reckon River has some sort of connection to individuals in pain or something along the lines of that. And so it begins. Oh, she's done it. Shout out Kaylee. Everyone's home, Wash. Let's go. Ah, great. <laughs> oh, don't you say that. It's Reavers. If our arm Reavers come back, that stuff's good. Like it's gonna matter. Just do it. Firefly class transport, you are ordered to uh, release the alliance. Your helm. Prepare to dock and be boarded. How are they gonna get out of this one? Oh, here it is. Um, an alert issued on an unidentified Firefly class believed to be carrying two fugitives, a brother and sister. What are they wanted for? It's not available. Firefly. Forty thousand of these old wrecks in the air, and that's all they give us. <laughs> well, I'm not about to have any surprises on a routine check. We run into these two, we shoot first. Sort it out later. We've got to run. Can't run. People in sin. No, if, they, if they find us, they'll send River back to that place. Because she'd be tortured. I, I, I'd never see her again. Stack everything right here. Plain sight. They don't want to seem like we got anything to hide. We give them Alliance boys the wrong impression. Or the right one. That too. Now go run, fetch your sister. You gotta show that you got nothing to hide. Be straight up honest with them. If it's a routine check, they'll just routine check the thing. There's no way out of this with a fight. <laughs> is this your vessel? It is. Bought and paid for. I'm Captain Malcolm Reynolds. And is this everyone, Captain? By way of crew, it is. Though in our infirmary, you're going to find a fellow we rescued off that derelict. Saved him, I guess you could say. Huh. Stay through the back. What's the common area? That guy ain't gonna be found These saved. Items, I take it you rescued them as well. A brother and sister. When I search this vessel, I won't find them, will I? No children on this boat. And siblings. <laughs> Adult siblings. <laughs> I misunderstood. No chance they could have stowed away? for that captain i know how these older model fireflies tend to have those troublesome little nooks do they smugglers and the like tend to prefer them just for that reason we will continue this conversation in a more official capacity on every inch of this joker talk oh joker. great settle down kaylee but cap is he here with that purple belly called serenity shut up <laughs> This is going to set them back a bit if everything gets tossed out. Oh, in a few weeks it will be a year. Why is this important? I'm just trying to put the pieces together. I'd say, uh, it's pretty young for me. A woman of stature such as yourself falling in with these types. <laughs> Not in the least. It's a mutually beneficial business arrangement. I rent the shuttle from Captain Reynolds, which allows me to expand my client base. And the captain finds that having a companion on board opens certain doors that might otherwise be closed to him. And you love him? Let me see if that's relevant. <laughs> well, it's your husband. Clever edit. Yes. You two met through Captain Reynolds. Captain was looking for a pilot. I found a husband. It seemed to work out. You fought with Captain Reynolds in the war. Fought with a lot of people in the war. And you lost. Fight with him sometimes too. <laughs> Is there any particular reason you don't wish to discuss your marriage? Don't see that it's any of my business is all. Hey, I found a few things. The legs. Oh, yeah. 
I definitely have to say it was her legs. <laughs> you can put that down. Her legs and right where her legs meet her back. That actually, that whole area. <laughs> that and, and then above it. <laughs> Safe birth birth crammed right under every cooling drive so that you strain your primary artery function and you end up having to recycle secondary exhaust through a bypass system just so as you don't end up pumping it through the main Atmo feed and asphyxiating the entire crew. Now that's done. Have you seen what she wears? Forget about it. Have you ever been with a warrior woman? <laughs> 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 hey, I love the interchanging cuts with the characters conversating in this episode. And I remember Joss Whedon used a similar, um, uh, I forgot which Buffy episode it was, but he used a similar situation of cutting um, between interviews in Buffy, um, where Buffy was a counselor and she was interviewing different uh, children uh, from her school. And it was cleverly edited together with certain uh, bits of dialogue leading on to the next character. And the same situation applies here. However, with the interchanging dialogue here, we don't only have cuts between different people. We have cuts between also the Alliance searching the ship and what they're discovering and some voiceovers of the characters being interviewed and the Alliance at the same time searching certain objects on the ship. And I think it's really well edited and put together. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely Jane's stuff. things not always so plain as on the central planets. These fugitives that we're looking for, the brother and the sister, they were not born in this world. Is that a fact? They also left port aboard a Firefly class transport. Persephone's a big place. Yeah. Like it is in that firefly, isn't it? And if anyone's hiding anywhere on it, we will find them. The one they cannot find is River, because obviously I don't know if she will hold her own in an interrogation. My guy right there is just looking under a plate. Malcolm Reynolds playing 4D chess with the way he's hiding Simon and River right there. <laughs> what a fantastic shot. Just gotta hold their composure for now. <laughs> I love how River's just taking it all in, being outside the ship. <laughs> My girl's been used to freaking torture and experimentation, and she's like, wow. <laughs> I'm gonna make a leap here and figure this is your first tour out here on the border. This is our last week in here. <laughs> then I can tell by your record you have a, a tendency to inspire that quality in people. I noticed your ship was called Serenity. You were stationed on Hera at the end of the war. Battle of Serenity Valley took place there, if I recall. You know, I believe you might be right. <laughs> Independence suffered a pretty crushing defeat there. And some say that after Serenity, the brown coats withdrew, that the war ended in that valley. It seems odd to name your ship after a valley you're on the wrong side of. May have been the losing side. Still not convinced it was the wrong one. <laughs> Can't wait to attack that transport. What? You're still fighting the same battle, Sergeant. Only those weren't soldiers you murdered. They were civilians, families, citizens loyal to the Alliance trying to make a new life for themselves and you just can't stand that, can you? So we attacked that ship, then brought the only living survivor to our infirmary. I'd ask him. Come ask, Captain. Only I'm not sure he'll be able to speak with his tongue split down the middle. He cut his... I haven't seen that kind of torture since... Since the war. This guy is making the... Wrong you and your crew are bound by law. Formal charges will be transmitted to Central Authority. Commander, I'm not what you need to be concerned about right now. Things go the way they are, there's going to be blood. Get in line. Go. <laughs> Damn! We made him watch. He probably tried to turn away. We wouldn't let him. You call him a survivor, he's not. Man comes up against that kind of will, there's no way to deal with it, I suspect. 
is to become it. This is the only, the only course left to him. <laughs> Just to try to make himself look like one. Cut on himself, desecrate his flesh, and then he'll start acting like one. You better go check on your medics, Captain. Let's have two. To escort Sergeant Manus to the brig. You idiot. Honestly, this captain's so frustrating. I love. I remember um, when I talked about the first episode. The first episode was really well in terms of world building. It was a lot of show, don't tell. Whereas the actual pilot that aired was more of exposition heavy, explaining things that happened in the world. Where I love the cues of the first episode. But this situation here, in terms of the Reavers. Um, the dialogue is well written in terms of hyping them up as a threat and the anticipation is real for hopefully we do eventually get to see the Reavers this season um, and it better live up to the hype. Um, but yeah, I love how the Reavers are talked about and the fear in Malcolm Reynolds' eyes talking about him and even the captain, you know, trying to throw him away as if they're some sort of bedtime story, but they're not. And it makes you think as well, capability of these individuals if they're making a guy watch what they do to other individuals and it turns him basically to like one where he has no other option damn i cannot wait but that's that that that, that that's a situation where uh telling instead of showing is done really well in terms of building the hype and, and anticipation for something let's go again <laughs> it's like a ride at a theme park let's go again Captain, sir, once the coast is clear, we should lay low in the shop. Your ship and its contents will be auctioned. The proceeds of the sale will be applied to the cost of your defense. Get him out of here. Go to Polanco. Josh, guards on the nursery. It won't matter. We won't find him. I know where he'll go. Good job. Come on. It's okay. Yep, 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 yep. He Come can on. sense him on the ship somehow. Oh. Like he can sense danger or... River, you don't have to be afraid. Why are we coming back here? Looking for familiar ground. He's on the hunt. We let him go first. Great. Right. So wanna, uh... <laughs> Thanks. Now I'll really have the advantage. I wonder if we see this individual and how he's mutilated himself. If this is going to be the first hint and teaser as to what the Reavers potentially look like. Oh. Oh, damn. Damn. Yeah, there you go, Captain. He saved your life. <laughs> you say you go on one, he still takes the cargo. Far out. Oh, dog. What a dog. He had to. Another problem. Wouldn't be civilized. Hopefully they manage to store some of the cargo on board still. They should have just left it in the secret compartment. But then again, you didn't want to show that you had something to hide. Ooh. That was, that was a good episode, actually. I really enjoyed that one. Um, I think in terms of the first three episodes I've seen, I still think Serenity ranks first, possibly. And this one, um, I think, is a by far better episode than The Train Job. Um, I really enjoyed this episode. Really enjoyed the thriller horror vibes to it. Um, really enjoyed, again, the Reaver tease. Um, having seen the first episode, it's much better. Um, but as an introductory thing to the Reavers, if this wasn't... If I hadn't seen Serenity, it's still great as well. Um, you just get a sort of tease and hint into what the Reavers are like and... Yeah, it was it was really really good. Like really, some really great tension scenes. Um, um, and it didn't actually go the way I expected it to go. I thought it was gonna be some sort of like 
um alien creature or maybe some sort of parasite on board but it was the reavers and that was their introduction um they saved the reaver introduction for the second episode that aired and um i really enjoyed some of the character interactions as i said some of the camera work was fantastic um especially the interchanging um uh the camera work was fantastic the editing was great as well i really enjoyed the editing in the scene involving the dialogue or the um the, the interrogation scenes with the captain of the alliance ship you know interrogating all the individuals on board and how the dialogue led to certain um questions with other characters it was really well put together and yeah i really i really enjoyed that episode but again it's the character interactions that i really enjoy because of all the distinct backgrounds and the characters and their personalities it what make it's what makes the character interactions really fascinating and enjoying to watch um and then again it feels like the show is still building up but the episode um is still good despite being just a normal salvage operation um obviously it's not what it seems um it was attacked by reavers the reavers set a trap they had to deal with that issue and then you see the effects of the reavers um in terms of like the individual having to watch his whole family um being mutilated and destroyed by the reavers like absolutely violated and he had no other option but to start doing it to himself and it's complete savagery and it makes me more hyped to see the reavers themselves um setting up a fantastic antagonist for this season if we ever do get a reveal of them i hope we do um i don't know but yeah it was great to see Malcolm weave his way out of that situation. Obviously, the captain is not going to let them profit, um, despite him saving his life. I think he's like, I'll choose one or the other. Listen, you get to leave. We didn't find anything. We didn't find the brother and sister we're looking for. You did save my life, but however, you are not profiting off this salvage mission. We are going to keep all the goods, and we're going to destroy all the evidence. But yeah, a really great episode nonetheless. Some really great atmospheric um scenes involving obviously the other ship that they had to go on board of and yeah i cannot complain i cannot complain i like this episode i really enjoyed the episode bushwhacked episode three of firefly as always hope you guys enjoyed it's been your boy ellie moses take care god bless peace